Go ahead. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Prospect Show. I 101. see. What? Nothing. My name is Chris, and today joining me we have Braden. And we're going to be taking you guys through a little bit of one of my favorite players in this entire class, and one of my favorite players I've watched in the last like five years, probably, Grant Delpit. He is widely projected as one of the top two players in this entire class, along with the guy we already watched in Jerry Judy. He is absolutely incredible. Uh, and for those of you guys who have been watching tape for the last two years, you guys have probably seen a lot of Grant Delpit. Uh, he is all over the place at LSU. That defense is incredible. And uh, I'm really excited to get toward to starting this, so... Uh, is there anything that you uh, have heard or seen about Grant Delpit yourself? Uh, basically, he, he's basically Jesus from what I've, from what people are saying about him. So yeah. So uh, Delpit, the one thing that really stood out to me about him was even last year when you're we watching guys like Devin White. Uh, I watched a little bit of Richard Lawrence before he went back. Uh, Greedy Williams, another guy who came out last year. It seems like every time we watched LSU tape, Grant Delpit would be the guy making all the plays. And he almost stole the show like every single game that we watched last year uh, of LSU. And this year, they have more complete defense. They looked as really, really good the first three quarters of the Texas game uh, until... Uh, Buchel or Ellinger, I think it was Ellinger, uh, came out and, and played extremely well to close out that game. Uh, but they're looking probably like one of the top two or three teams in the country at this point. And uh, yeah, it, I would say it, Grant Delpit might be the best prospect in this entire class. So with that, um, <laughs> hopefully that wasn't too much overhyped. We'll start with the Alabama game from last year. Uh, and kind of see where that takes us. And he will be wearing, uh, he changed numbers this year. Last year he was number nine, I believe. Yeah. I don't remember if he was nine this year or last year. I'm pretty sure it was last year. I think this year he's seven. Oh, come on, YouTube. There we go. There we go. So he is immediately disqualified from the Denver Broncos on the basis that he wears number seven. Yeah, he's still nine. So he was nine last year or eight last year. It might be eight, but he's circled, so he shouldn't be hard to find. So, actually, I'm going to go a couple of plays back, and I'm kind of just going to walk you guys through the whole overall arching point, because I think that that's going to be what's most important and what's most valuable about Delpit is how he does over a series of plays, right? So on this play, he's almost kind of like a mic. He's like right in the middle of the linebacking group in a 4-2-5. The dude's basically playing almost linebacker. Next play, same thing. Playing almost literally linebacker position on a blitz. Drops in coverage from that spot, blitzes from that spot. Next play, he's lined up against the Alabama slot receiver, who I believe is Henry Rux, who's like a 4-2-6 guy. Oh, well, then he puts this. Now he's lined up on almost the edge type of, of linebacker role. So, like, every single play, he's lined up in what could be a different spot. And he strikes the block. And yeah, and then the last play, he's lined up as a deep safety. The dude does literally everything. And 
Now they have him as a linebacker in the 3-3-5. Back to the slot. And I think that was actually Joey G. And then, yeah, back over the top again. So he lines up all over the place. In this play, he's a force player. Does a nice job of getting back inside as well. Tackle. Nice tackle. And he's literally on the edge. Let's play probably as the edge rusher here. Yep. Nice force. Good job staying engaged. Blew up the blocker. Helped his team make a play. Boom. Nice patience in zone, especially with the pass play. Oh, man. Okay, that wasn't really all that bad. We uncovered for safety. I was saying Irv Smith, I believe, the tight end. Mm -hmm. Probably couldn't make a better play on the ball, but overall playing pretty tight. Ship roll, obviously nice. Back on the edge. A little bit of a spin move. I really like how he stays disciplined, right? He's not over pursuing, he's taking pretty decent angles, making sure that nobody gets past him. Kind of like that last line of defense. Especially against a team like Alabama that can make really big plays. And also on this play, he also has the recognition to take gaps. So yes, he can be an over the top guy, but on the line here, he's gonna be a really nice force player, right? And to completely take away this outside run for Jacobs or whoever that running back is. And same thing, he has a really nice job here being the force player right on the edge. Nowhere to, nowhere to run on the outside.
his patience, especially against a guy like Chewie, who has the agility and quickness. To, yeah, I was about to say, he didn't tackle him, and then I was, I was like, well, to be fair, I don't know how many humans on the planet could tackle Judy the first, like, soundly. It's like, he did a good job. I I don't know if it's just the game plan, but it's like, he just didn't... It's like, he was nice to have... It was nice to have the versatility, but it just didn't seem like he had a whole lot of, like, production, if you feel, in that game. In that particular game, yeah. So, I'm not going to make any judgments. It's like, but for what I did see, he seems like, you know, pretty decent in coverage, sound tackler. Like, there's some stuff, it's just I'd like to see him, you know, have more production. Because versatility is nice, but if you don't do anything with it, then... These are all pretty short games, too. The last one was five minutes. This one's only four minutes. Yeah. He definitely has more playmaking ability than he showed off in the Alabama tape. I yeah, of course. Much. That's why I, I'm not, like, saying he's terrible, because I realize, you know... And I think that the one thing, too, about Delpit that kind of makes him stand out for safety, and there are a lot of top guys who can do this, like your Jamal Adams, but he does a really nice job of being aware of the, like, protections and stuff. Because, mm -hmm. like, watch how he fills this gap, right? He's in a really nice position to make the tackle against the run. So he knows he understands run face, he understands uh, different types of routes and, and both the pass and the run game. He has the ability to pass, rush, and blitz. So it's not only versatility in alignment, but it's also versatility in assignment. Always around the ball too, which is nice. High motor. Probably should have said the block, but... So I think... S sorry, a bird is going completely sicko mode outside. I, f I think I figured out why he doesn't get a lot of production. His team's game plan to, to avoid him. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, that's what it, it, it took a little bit to click in my head. It's like, well, let's take this. They always go to whatever the opposite side he's on. You know, and basically the only two players in, oh, that was nice slipping that block. And the only two players I'd have confidence to get over there are Jerry Judy and Andrew Thomas. Practically, I'm kind of joking on Thomas, but yeah, Judy, I could see him doing it. He's that much of like a freak, but yeah. Thank nice you. Pick. And then nice, I love the intelligence to just take the knee for the touchback. Doesn't try and get a glorious return, just does what's smart for the team. I lo You love to see that. That's one of my pet peeves is when you they return an interception at the goal line, and then they lose like at least 10 yards of recovery, of yardage. So the one thing that's going to kind of stand out about this too, and you're going to see it on this play, is he's the over-the-top defender. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that it's almost like a cover one look. It is uh, practically a cover one look. I think the two corners might be in zone. I, it looks more man to me, but that's just me. Because this corner on the outside here is facing towards, so it might be cover two of some kind too. But regardless of where he is, anyway, he's in the middle deep zone. And he just does it. Well, of course, they don't they cut it off. But he does a really nice job of coming across to get out of the zone and make the play. It's a really nice read. Nice tackle. All right. All right. It's, it's starting to click for me here. And the best part about this, too, in my personal opinion, is where he starts. Right? He's not even the guy in the interior left linebacker spot like Devin Wegg is. He's going to be the guy that comes around and gets us on the backside. Which, again, is athleticism at play, but it's also his understanding of the running back and, and the, I guess, opponent that he's going against. Great job being the force right there.
basically almost getting into a fight. Uh, you love to see pretty. it. I'm aware. Oh, okay. I was being sarcastic. Oh, all right. For what it's worth, I've heard he's been doing pretty good in Cleveland. That that would be it. That would be a tough day for my ego if Greedy turns out good. Well, he's not going to have to be the number one there, which helps, because Stenzel Ward is going to good. be a top ten corner by the end of the year. Yeah. Oh, he almost got there. Out. Speaking of Greedy. I can't even fault him for that. That wasn't even terrible coverage. said that too oh he almost I don't know who 22 is but that might yeah, be 22 fault. oh he Raheem more to that he should have just blown up actually you know to be fair taking Felipe Franks out of the game would actually hurt them more than keeping them in <laughs> okay I like that play as well he didn't actually get the result again but he has a really nice job of finding that gap for the running back planes to go and stuffing that inside run Forcing him out. Although that's okay. not really the best play by the corner on the force play. That was, though. By oh, he's a tackle. Boom. Oh, I love how he undercuts that block, too. <clears throat> Changing direction is really, really nice here. He's going to go outside, almost trying to play on the outside lane. Then right here, he starts to cut back in underneath. And that's what helps him get the tackle. Great play. Getting on that tackle too. Cool. So I definitely want to watch one more game first before we kind of even start to identify because we still didn't really see a whole lot there. Uh, yeah. So let's go with the Georgia tape, and then we'll kind of be able to make a, a little bit more of a clear judgment depending on how long this is. And if this we'll is good, watch, watch it be like games. twenty minute film. <laughs> yeah, Arapaho lost. That's a L. oh heritage heritage lost. That's an L for them. But yeah, based on uh, what we see overall, too, I think that that's kind of another thing that you have to keep in mind. Is like when you watch the actual like full whole game and how like the game continues to develop over time. I think that's kind of where you see Dalvin make his biggest impact, right? Because one play he'll be taking out Jerry Judy, the next play he'll be taking out Irv Smith, the next play he'll be taking on Jonah Williams. Uh, so he kind of has not only the versatility, but he kind of takes away that matchup, which is kind of cool. Nice hip movement. A little bit out of phase, but not the end of the world. That's McCall Harmon, too. That's not exactly a slow receiver. Oh, hell no. Oh, missed tackle. Oh hell no! This is not happening right now. What is it? Oh, I have, I hear footsteps outside. Oh, that's real tough right there. Another miss. Ooh.
That was nice. That was nice. Good run fit. Nice song. Nice. The motor played through the whistle. Love to see it. Love to see it. Yeah, I think this is this probably should be the last game in the video. I'm gonna have to go take care of that. Okay. So I like how he undercuts this block here. That's a really nice shot. Of course, he ends up kind of missing the tackle, but slowing him down enough to help the defenders out. Ooh, and he has still almost got the sack. And I think that kind of speaks to his explosiveness also. He's going to come right down here, almost Shoy Palomalu style. For those of you guys who remember seeing him play about 10, 15 years ago. I like how he gets off with that zone also. He does a really nice job here. He's in this kind of left hash zone. And then he sees number seven come out. I think that might be Swift. And it yeah, attacks. And gets the tackle. Helps getting on the tackle. He's very zone aware. I think that speaks to his knowledge of the playbook and scheme as well. His learning potential is very nice. Great patience waiting for their team to come out of the field. Same thing, good vision, ability to read the play. That's really good vision on his part to read the play action first off. Recognizes it very quickly, but then he drops. And that sets him up for a position to make that PD. Nice. That is a very, very good play. And that's the kind of stuff that you're expecting to see from him. He almost probably could have caught that, too. But it's that kind of route recognition, vision, awareness... It kind of helps him separate himself from the rest of the players on the defensive side of the ball in this class. Nice tackle with Swift again. Great vision and ability to read the play. Unfortunately, gets rolled over, but positioning was excellent. Same thing. Great job bringing the reverse, fixing on the tackle. Shove coming down, getting off the block. 
to make the tackle there as well. So, based on those three games, uh, any thoughts on what we've seen so far from Delpit? Pretty damn good. You know, he's just... He was, you know, he's just really smart. He's really smart with how he, how he, he reads, reads the play and, fuck. He's smart how he reads the play. He, you know, he, he's a sound tackler. Very, very athletic. Just an overall, a real nice play. Cool. So, we will save some more of those other games for a different time. Uh, but today we only have time for three of them. So we're going to go over uh, his traits as of now, based on the three games that we saw from 2018. So tackling, I'm also going to go with 19. Very similar yeah. to Simmons. A, I, elite, but not perfect, is what I'm going to use there. Yeah. Man coverage, same kind of deal. I really 18. like his ability to cover not only the... Uh, tight ends in man coverage, but also he has the ability to every once in a while switch on nickels. So, uh, I do like that as well. Zone coverage, I'm even going to bump even higher to a 19. I love him in zone coverage. He's so aware. He knows when to get off the zone. He knows where guys are in his zone. He's aware of where all the other zones on his own defense are. Uh, and he never really has an issue with eyes in the back of his head, uh, which for safety is a big deal. Even a little bit less so for a corner, but I love to see that from safeties, especially when they're in the last line of defense, like Delphic is sometimes in that deep cover one look. Uh, athleticism, I'm not going to go as high as Simmons, because Simmons has elite quickness and burst. Uh, I think Delphic is a little bit more explosive than Simmons is, uh, but in terms of actual like speed and... I don't want to necessarily say quickness, but burst. Um, I think Delpit has a little bit more of the finesse athleticism, and Simmons has a little bit more ability to speed to power, so, or power to speed. So I'm going to go with Simmons a little bit in the athleticism department, and tangibles, just to gain a slight edge to Delpit there uh, with yeah. 19. He is incredibly, incredibly aware, intelligent, all that good stuff. Uh, I really, really like his mental traits, and that's really, as I mentioned, what st helps him stand out uh, from this class overall, and a lot of the other defenders uh, that are going to be coming out this year. So, with that being said, it's minus one, minus two, minus three, minus one, minus one, but it's minus six, which is going to be 94, and I believe my highest grade of the year. Yeah. I'd say that's about fair. Cool. So, uh, anything else that you want to add overall that we uh, didn't really talk a lot about? Maybe there's a category that I don't have on here that you look at for safeties that I don't have? No, I'm all right with that for now. Fabulous. Well, with that being said, hopefully you guys... Uh, nope, actually, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future content like this over the course of the next few months. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a thing or two and enjoyed this one. But for now, have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace out when this loads when this loads